Welcome back to you. A few days ago, there was a riot at a playland in the USA over, wait for it, wearing the hijab. I spoke with Raheel Raza, author of Their Jihad, Not My Jihad, for her reaction. I don't think that it needed to have ha happened this way, Michael. Mm -hmm. Very simply, it, you know, the onus was on the large group of Muslims who were there. And from what I understand, it wasn't all the rights. It was only some rights. Yeah, yeah. And there are restrictions. When we go to Wonderland here, there are weight and height restrictions. Mm -hmm. So we are not going to fight every time that there is a rule or restriction that doesn't apply to what our beliefs may be. Yeah. And I think that for Muslim communities in North America, you know, who've been here long enough to understand that, you know, there are principles in, in Islam which says that necessity is so far superior to restrictions and prohibitions. Mm -hmm. So these women could have not ridden on those rides or they could have uh, taken off the hijab if they really wanted to. I understand the uh, authorities were willing to give, uh, refund them their money. Yeah. So it could have been easily settled. But, uh, you know, this is symptomatic of a larger problem, Michael, and the larger problem is a certain group of Muslims who want to impose their religiosity in the public sphere. Well, well let me ask you something, because you said they could have re removed uh, their head coverings so of yes. various types if, if they wanted to. I, I, I'm not Muslim, I and mean, we, we all claim to understand Islam. I don't think we do. Are you allowed to do that? Are you allowed to, to remove, obviously not it's a full covering, but yes. uh, on head your head and face, you can remove that? Michael, I'm not a religious leader, but my understanding is, from what I've read in the Quran, mm -hmm. that the hair certainly is not the most sensuous part of my body, so there yeah. are other parts. Not that mine are in particular, covered. by the way. Mine is <laughs> yes. not sexy at no, all. Exactly, no hair. <laughs> but um, I, don't, I haven't understood in, stood it as meaning covering my hair. Yeah. It speaks about modesty, and there was no question of being immodest in any mm -hmm. way. So yes, certainly they can remove, I mean, a face covering, definitely. There are some women who believe that a head covering is religious, but regardless, of whether they consider it, consider it um, an obligation or not. In this particular instance, they didn't have to go on those rides. I mean, going on a ride is not an obligation. Well, it's not a human right, is it, to, to, uh, well, to, to go well, on exactly. the, the magic kangaroo ride or something? Yes, but following the rules of law is certainly very much uh, recommended by, by well, the so. faith, and this is very important. And I think that more and more, uh, as Muslims, even, even in Canada, we are dealing with the separation of the public and the private. Mm. And those small groups who are pushing this in the public sphere, especially supported by organizations like CARE, who wait for... CARE opportunity. being? C-A-I-R, the, the uh, can I, not Canadian, they are the Council American Council of American, American Islamic Relations. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, they wait for opportunities like this because then they press all the Islamophobia buttons. Yeah. So what is happening, and we see this more and more, is that when uh, religious groups come against, head to head against regulations and mm. laws, and we've seen this in Canada as well, you know, the laws that are established are not to keep Muslims out. I think we have fantastic religious freedom in North America. Yeah. As you know, you know, we have our mosques, places of worship. We can do whatever we want. But when we are in the public sphere, we have to respect the rules of law. This is what the faith tells us, but not me. The, I mean, I, what you're saying, by the way, is, is delicious. It, it's so balanced. It, it, it's so fair. Uh, Canada is not particularly different from, from the U.S. We, we do have, we probably have more respect for Islam in many areas than we do for Christianity because there's a certain political correctness and a fear of being accused right. of racism and so on. And, and in this case, it's so understandable. You have a, a people running a fairground and they know you, you just can't go on with that over your head because we're going to be in huge trouble if, God forbid, there is an accident. A lot of these people have come from, or their parents have come from countries where there's terrible oppression. Yes. They come to a, a free country and it seems so reasonable to say, well, I demand the right to vote. I demand the right to, to, to travel, to express myself. But I can't demand, demand the right to go on a fair ride unless... I fulfill the obligations, as you say, height, weight or whatever, yes. of the people who own the fair. Well, that's true, but that is a reality that we must all be aware of. After all, these are people who must stop for a moment and think, I've come here by choice, I've come here because this, these countries give me liberty, equality, freedom, mm -hmm. the right to stand up and, and, and slam them as well, which they do very openly. Yeah. But also, at the same time, you have to understand that there are insidious, subversive agendas by some groups of Muslims, and this is what, what is troubling, because then they, this impacts the rest of us as well. Mm -hmm. And it is happening more and more in Canada there needs to be you know the policy is not clear in terms of uh, religious accommodation so we've seen with the Sikhs uh, you know taking kirpans into schools we've seen the issue of uh, someone wanting to drive a motorcycle with uh, without a helmet mm. so what is the country going to do are they going
going to accommodate everybody's rules and regulations separately? Or are they going to say, these are the laws, abide by them, or you're welcome to go somewhere else? What about the, the, the alacrity, alacrity with which violence ensued? You had people that, punching, fighting, kicking. Yes. We saw on the video very quickly. Yes. Well, aggression, of course, is always, uh, you know, uh, n not appreciated. And from what I read, it was initially an, an altercation between the groups, between the Muslim community groups themselves. And then, of course, the authorities got involved. I think both sides could have handled it with a little more diplomacy, with a little more respect respect and dignity, which is very important. But of course, we're not having a dialogue. You see, this is butting of heads. Mm. This is one group saying that, no, I insist on doing what I want to do regardless of the regulations. Right. And the other group perhaps not understanding that maybe they didn't know that these were the regulations. But certainly, when we go to a particular um, institution, we try and figure out what it is that we're supposed to do. Mm -hmm. Every place has rules and regulations, okay. and they're not going to change them for me. Uh a couple of times on, on the show already, we've only been on a, a few days, you know, but a couple of times we've spoken about the, the cartoons yes. from Denmark and Sweden. And, you know, I take no joy in showing these cartoons. I love religion and faith. I, I have a strong faith myself. I also actually relish the modesty that many young uh, Muslim women show when you, you see girls dressed, frankly, like little hookers. Yes. And there are Muslim women who are beautiful but modest. I think that's admirable. But it's also the preservation of the freedom to say, I disagree, the freedom to offend. And this seems to be part of a bigger package, a bigger picture, it which is. is saying you have to do what you're told the rest of the world according to a certain interpretation of Islam. Absolutely, and, and this is when it becomes forced in the public sphere. So groups like CARE who, uh, you know, fire these flames of, of so-called Islamophobia, which means that any time someone comes up against a regulation or if Muslims are criticized, it becomes Islamophobia, and mm -hmm. therefore, due to political correctness, people are, are afraid to speak out. You know, between the two extremes that you're talking about, Michael, there is the balance. Yes. And yes. it is the balance that we need to have. I mean, there are those of us who don't perhaps cover our face or hair, but we are still practicing observant Muslims. Mm -hmm. And it's that personal decision. I'm a Muslim because of my personal choice and decision, not because someone else tells right. me to be. Okay. And I think that we have to respect this and we have to encourage this independent thinking among our youth so that they can stand up and say, I am Canadian and Muslim, I am American and Muslim, I will follow the laws of the land. And I am free to be as uh, religious a Muslim, as conservative, as orthodox, it doesn't matter, mm. without imposing it in the public sphere and without butting heads any time that there is a regulation. Mm. They are, these rules have not been made to keep Muslims out. No. I think no. these countries have been very welcoming to Muslims. Yeah. But there has to be reciprocity as well. Okay. You know, Muslim communities, especially these hardcore Muslim communities, okay. have to stop uh, you know, butting heads. Rahil Raza, you, you are really, you are a, just a, a beacon of hope and light. Thank you Thank so you. very much indeed. Thank you for having me.